We really need a coffee table, so this week I'm going to build one with just a drill, a circular saw and a trim roller. And maybe a hand saw and a file. Hey everybody, Pete here from Northern Works. You ever watch those videos sometimes where they build a beautiful piece of furniture and they say, you can do this too with just your DIY tools, but then they use a table saw or a CNC router. Well, I don't have any of those tools, but I do need a coffee table and I've got half a sheet of plywood. So I'm gonna try and see if it's possible to make beautiful furniture with just a few DIY tools. Uh, I already know that this is the nicest part of the face grain, so that's gonna be where my table top comes from. And then I'll work out where all of the other parts can come from after I've done that. Wait, let me explain what I'm trying to build. Now I haven't built a piece of furniture that didn't come in a box with instructions for about 20 years. So I've kept the top really simple. It'll fit our space. And this little bevel cut just kind of adds a bit of spice. But on the base, I've been really inspired by Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture with this sleek, modern design. And I think these elements are gonna just kind of elevate the whole piece while keeping it simple enough that even I can build it. So I'm trying to work out if I can make the leg assemblies as one piece or whether I need to cut them into two halves and then glue them together. I don't really want to do that because that would be gluing two end grains of plywood together, which I don't think would be strong. I think I can do it. I just want to mark one out and then see if they'll stack in the space remaining of the plywood. So we'll give it a go. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Before I actually cut anything, I'm going to replace this 36 tooth blade with a 60 because uh, I think that will give me much better results on the edges. For the tabletop, I'm going to do about a 30 degree chamfer on each of the sides. I'm not going to worry too much about the exact angle because it'll be the same on all four sides as long as I don't fiddle with it in between. I was really put off by the circular saw at first and I know a lot of beginner DIYers are but it really is a great tool much better than a jigsaw for loads of things. Just make sure you set it up well each time and respect that blade. I've got some specific tips in a short I'll leave a link in the description and you can watch that after this video. I need a new workshop managed to cut all the way through that wood. Like I said, I'm definitely not an expert. Right, that's the tabletop and the stretcher piece is done. Now it's on to the leg assembly. When I was designing these legs, I was thinking ahead to how I would cut them out of a plywood sheet. That's why there are so many straight edges which are much easier on the circular saw. Can't work out if this is cheating, but I just need to finish those cuts off. Someone will have a problem with me using the hand saw, but there it is. I used a marker to trace out my legs, which gives me a thicker line so I can cut to the outer edge and know that I've got plenty of wiggle room to trim. everything with the saw. It's time for the router. Using a trim router with a template bit is a really simple way to make much more complex and refined pieces. Ideally I would have used double-sided tape to stick the template to each workpiece but I didn't have any so I had to make do with clamps. 
tape definitely would have been a lot easier. Alright, I've got my legs, I've got my stretcher pieces, I've got my tabletop. Everything was cut in less than an afternoon, so this is a really accessible project, I think, for anyone with just some DIY tools and a bit of time and a bit of patience with the router. I'm going to get these sanded up, ready for gluing, uh, glue them up and then leave them overnight to dry. While I'm doing this, I've got a small favour to ask. I'm trying to grow a community on YouTube of folks like me who care about design but want to consume less and who want to learn to create more things that are built to last. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's someone you know. If so, consider subscribing and share this video with that friend of yours. Thanks. I really appreciate it. So I've let all that dry for about 24 hours and I've come back to have a look at it and I've realized that one of the legs is not as strong as the other one. So I'm going to try and put some dowels in and then see if I can uh, reattach that wonky leg. I'm not 100% sure if this is a good idea or a bad idea, but it's the only idea I've got. All right, those are looking pretty good actually. I think they're gonna be a lot stronger. What I'm gonna do is leave it to dry overnight, uh, but go around and fill in some of these little gaps in the plywood, uh, and then I think tomorrow we'll be ready for finishing. This is looking really good. I filled in all the gaps and it's almost ready for sanding and then final finishing, but I wanna do a bit of a dry fit. Um, and to attach the top to the legs, I was gonna use these uh, L clamps, but they're just really ugly. So I think what I'm going to do is cut them in half and drill another hole in there and use them as, you know, almost like a figure eight. Uh, it's not a figure eight, but I'll make it work. I think I'm going to add a round over edge on these legs. They, they, they look a little bit like a GCSE art and design project. Um, but apart from that, I think we're ready for sanding and finishing. made such a big mistake saying I'll only use three tools because I've got a perfectly good orbital sander in there but I've committed
I'm three hours in and I still haven't even finished the first pass on the legs. Don't be a hero, just buy an orbital sander. I just had an absolute disaster. I was sanding away, sanding on the top, and it fell. It's all cracked up, so I'm gonna have to cut another edge off. Hopefully, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, I don't think, because there's still enough material that it'll, uh, the legs will still fit, but I need to get them clamps on. So the sanding's all done and it's ready for finish, but before I put anything on it, I just wanted to leave it overnight and see how I kind of feel about it. Overall, I absolutely love it. Really, really pleased with it. Apart from a couple of things. One is, it just feels slightly too wide. The length is absolutely perfect. It looks great with the legs, but the width, it just, it just feels a bit like squat. So I'm gonna narrow it out and just slim down that profile and, and I think that'll make a huge difference to how it'll fit in the room. And the second thing is I need to take these corners off. They're just gonna, I know that someone's gonna walk into them or the dog's gonna bash his head or bite it or something. So I'm gonna round off those corners. What do you reckon, Archie? All right, we are ready for finishing. I finished the table with a stained Danish oil, which is simple to apply and leaves a tough finish on the tabletop. I won't make you watch all five coats of this. So, is it possible to build great furniture with just three power tools? Well, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but it's definitely something that I'm really proud of. And it's given me a bit more confidence to design and build my own furniture and things that will really love around the home. I hope it's inspired you and if it has then why not leave me a comment and better yet why don't you share your progress with me on Instagram. You can find me there at northern.works. I hope you enjoyed this video and I think you might like this one too.